One cloud name bucking that trend, Nutanix out with earnings, beating expectations, still reporting a loss of nearly $420 million. The stock is moving higher, up about 65 7%. Joining us to discuss the quarter, CEO Rajiv Ramaswamy. Uh, Rajiv, good to see you again. Um, I, I want to ask you particularly about your reintroduction of guidance here, especially given what we saw from Autodesk and another part of software. Well, what's giving you that uh, confidence to be able to give this visibility at this point? Yeah, John, great to be with you on the show today. Uh, one of the things, as you know, we've been doing is uh, transforming Nutanix to be a subscription company. Uh, and at this point, we are far along that journey. Our business is almost all subscription at this point, and we have the stability of the renewals business starting to kick in. So this uh, combined with the solid operational uh, track record that we've built over the last four quarters, where we've consistently uh, beat expectations and raised them going forward, gives us the confidence to go uh, give annual guidance to our investors. And okay. that's what we did this quarter. Uh, you know, we, uh, this quarter itself, of course, we, uh, you know, annual contract value, uh, value bookings grew 33% year over year, revenue grew 21%, we're close to free cash flow break even. So generally the company is performing well and we felt uh, confident about giving uh, guidance. Give us some color on what's happening with new customers, new logo growth. That is down a bit year over year. And you, you gave some explanation for that, but I know some investors are a bit skittish about what that might mean given the past. What does it mean this time? Yes. First of all, we have over 20,000 plus customers and we are continuing to grow uh, our customer base. Uh, more recently, we focused our efforts on actually building bigger business with newer customers. So our sales force is now focused on getting higher dollar values with customers and focused on, let's call it, bigger, we're moving up market more into the enterprise. And so that has a natural impact in terms of, you know, you get fewer logos, but you get more dollars per logo. And indeed, that's been the case over the last year that we've seen gradually. Our new logo dollars actually have gone up like 25% for each new logo. So that's a trend that we uh, are uh, continuing. And of course, you know, as we go forward, we'll make sure that we have the appropriate incentives in place to continue driving these new logos. Because again, you know, our new and upsell business continues to be a foundation, right? That we keep building that in while we then prosecute the renewal business at a much lower cost point. So that's the lifeblood of a, a subscription economy. And uh, so we invest both in continuing to build a new and upsell business, as well as uh, making sure we prosecute the renewals. Now, you do point out uh, that you have a better understanding of what you call potential fluctuations in our average contract term length, uh, down a touch year on year. I mean, is that a sign that, that companies or, or clients are more cautious, or what would account for that, that, that shorter length of a contract? No, no, not at all, actually. So if you look at this quarter, this is our fiscal Q1, uh, it's a strong quarter for federal. And the U.S. federal typically tends to have shorter duration contracts uh, uh, compared to uh, the rest of the business that we have. So we've actually gotten good visibility. Uh, so every Q1, uh, contract durations come down a bit, and then they go back up uh, in Q2. So the contract duration was about 3.1 years. They'll probably tickle up maybe to 3.2. Uh, it's going to remain in that range uh, as we go forward. Uh, Rajiv, we're going to be talking a lot of cloud and infrastructure-related stuff next week with AWS reInvent happening. And one of the themes likely to be multi-cloud, which is an area where you guys play. What are you seeing uh, as the key... Uh, points of leverage, points of advantage that are determining whether a customer goes with Nutanix versus you know, any of these other number of multi-cloud players. What are you offering that's particularly working? Absolutely, John. Great question there. So fundamentally, if you look at what the customers are trying to do, they are operating increasingly in what we call a hybrid multi-cloud world where their applications, they choose the right cloud for the right applications. They want the flexibility to run their applications wherever it suits them best, whether it be based on cost, whether it be based on business reasons, whether it be based on the specific services offered by a cloud provider. And that includes on-prem, right? Their own on-prem cloud, their edge locations, as well as the public cloud of their choice. Now, Nutanix provides a unique value proposition for our customers in this regard, right? What we do is we provide a single platform, single software stack that they can deploy in a consistent way across any of these locations. We do data really well. We manage and uh, manage all forms of data, and that's a key differentiation because right. customers really need to manage their data everywhere. Mm -hmm. Very simple platform, really consumer-grade simplicity to the enterprise. 
complete flexibility and choice. Right. Choice of hypervisor, choice of hardware, choice of cloud, choice of licensing duration and terms. And, and our, our customer support is off the charts. Uh, so our a, net promoter score is at 90. 